Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on designing vertical brace connections inside of SDS2. My name is Laura Sinclair, and I've been with the company around eight and a half years. In this webinar, we'll be covering how the uniform force method can and will affect the output of your vertical brace connections, different vertical brace material types, connections, designing a system connection around a lockable field, two and three point bracing, shared connections between the beam and vertical brace, and seismic connection design. Please type in your questions in the questions area and at the end we'll do a live Q&A. So we have over 650 connection types supported for vertical bracing. So these include angle, HSS, pipe, wide flange, rod brace, and WT material types to pick from. They automatically check the entire connection joint for erectability. And then SDS2 is the only software that you need to design and model these and many other steel connections with our intelligent automation and flexible setup options. So therefore, there's no need for a third-party connection design software. I'm not going to go through all of these configurations today, but to make sure to check out our short videos on our SDS2 YouTube channel for a closer look at each vertical brace material type. So every time that SDS2 frames a connection in, it is going to provide your design calculations and expanded calculations. So the design calculations are going to just show all the calculations and then the expanded calculations are going to be the longhand form to show all the formulas that our software came up with to provide that connection to pass. So every time that something's going to be modified, it will also refire those expanded calculations every single time. We'll be covering the uniform force method. I'll be taking a deeper dive into no special case, special case one, which would be physically moving the work point, special case two, and special case three, along with adding the gusset beam interface forces to the beam. Every member inside of SDS2 can be galvanized, and we're going to be covering a break apart option. And so on my right hand side here, you see galvanized vertical brace. So if it automatically is broken apart, then the other angle there for the double material is broken off into its separate member. So all of the members can go separate for galvanizing. We have lockable fields inside of SDS2, so maybe I want to just change one field inside of a connection. Then I can change that and then the system is going to design a connection around that and calculations will be provided. We'll go into that a little bit deeper. So in this situation, I wanted to maybe make that gusset plate one foot tall. Then once I do that, all of the other fields that are grayed out are automatically going to refire to cause that or to make sure that that's one foot tall. SCS2 supports approximately 150 connection combinations for two and three point bracing to meet your needs. So I do have in these situations, I just have that top beam slanted or sloped. And so I just show some two and three point and the middle brace there doesn't necessarily have to be perpendicular. It can just be slightly sloped as well, as you can see. We have shared connections. So instead of just having those be two different clip angles for the gusset to column connection and the beam to column connection, um, you can combine those. So in this instance, I just have the end plate and the clip angle. Newer to SDS2, we provide brace to brace connections. Those are also going to be provided with calculations. And then the last thing we're going to end on is seismic connection design. We have offered the SCBF and the OCBF. And so as you can see, the SCBF is going to have that hinge zone in there for the gusset. All right, I'll go ahead and dive into our demo. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is our uniform force methods. 
by default, I'm just going to go into my design criteria. We have add gusset beam interface forces to the beam. And then I also have, by default, it's set to no special case for my uniform force method special case design. So what I mean by that is if I double click on this beam and I go to my loads, you can see that my gusset interface forces, there's 20.78 of that gusset interface force from that vertical brace is going into that beam connection. Now, if I were to uncheck that, then now there would be nothing that shows up here of transferring. We also have our no special case. So what no special case is, is when it distributes the gusset interface forces to the beam, and it also uh, distributes them the gusset to the column connection. So this typically means that you'll have a smaller gusset but it also may result in the beam connection failing because it might be heavily loaded. So if I go in, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And just so we can see this a little clearer. So right now, I have this set to my no special case. Now, if I go into my connection specifications, you can upgrade this or you can update this for a case-by-case -case basis. So if I go for my uniform force method for a special case and I change this to special case 2, you're going to see that automatically this gusset became larger because now it's not going to have those gusset interface forces into the beam connection. Now it's all going to go into the gusset to column connection. So if I click OK here, you'll see that my gusset grew larger and also it made it so I had more rows of bolts because now more of the because our interface forces is now going into this connection right here. If I edit this beam now and go to my loads, now you see that nothing is coming in. The gusset interface forces is coming into this connection. Another thing too is we talked about design calculations and expanded calculations. So we have our left end settings and our right end settings. I'm just going to start scrolling down. And this is everything that it takes to make up for this left end for it to pass. And you can see all the formulas that the system underwent to make sure that the system passed or this has a system design connection. Now, if your engineer ever questions something about the calculation, you can always send them these design calculations to the engineer, too. So now let's go ahead and change. For the special case, too, you can just do a transfer percent. So right now, 100% is going into this connection. connection the gusset to column connection. Now maybe I just want 50% of this to go through or get past to this. I'll hit tab. You saw that that gusset became a little smaller. And also my expanded calculations, they automatically update every single time that you make a modification. So if I hit OK here, that gusset became a little smaller. Now there's not as many rows of bolts. But if I come back into my beam and my, go to my loads here, you can now see that half of the gusset interface forces are still going into this connection. We talked about galvanizing. So 
if I come into my job or sorry my fabricator options and I go to my galvanizing options there is an option to automatically break apart galvanized members if I check this on and then make these members galvanized so I check on the galvanized this can be for any member it's going to automatically break this apart so each member then can get galvanized separately and now if I double click on this it's still going to bring up my vertical brace so I can still change things but this is now its own miscellaneous member as well because it's going to go and get galvanized separately. So we had no special case and I did skip special case one because I'm going to physically show that momentarily. So now moving for the special case three, this would be if it's only framing from into the web of the column. And if it's doing that, then I can make it so all of this can go into the beam connection and it no longer connects to the column. So what I mean by that is if I come in here, I'll move this off to the side, go into my connection specifications and go to special case three. Now you can see that it's only going to make the gusset connection to the top of the beam and it's no longer connecting to the web of the column. Just change it for that one. Now we talked about lockables that I was going to come to. If I just want to update it for here for this specific connection I can go into a lockable field. Maybe I want the length to be two feet instead of one foot five. If I type in two feet, you'll notice that the gusset became larger and also my web plate became larger as well. I can click OK and it designs a system connection around that lockable field and also if I came in here I can either change it in my by just editing the connection or I can edit it through the member as well for the lockable fields. We talked about the special case 2, special case 3, and then no special case. And then the last one we have is special case 1. So that is physically moving that work point. So right now, the work point is at half the nominal depth for the beam and the column, but I could change that work point to be at the face of the flange of the column and the face of the flange of the beam, and that would help simplify the geometry for that gusset. So I'm just going to make sure I select that member end. I can move stretch and then I want to let me add in some construction lines really quick here. So let me try that again. Move stretch member. I'll do intersection and construction line, intersection and construction line. So as you can see, I physically move that work point. And now you see that the gusset became smaller as well to accommodate, to simplify that geometry. We can do two and three point. So I do have a truss set up back here. As you can see, we have three point and two point bracing. We do 150 or over 150, I should say, combinations of this, but also it helps with the geometry. So let's say something changed. Let me change this member end. And let me just stretch this up. 
Beforehand, I did send up some member pins, and that helps with modifications as well. So let's say this roof actually was sloping. I can move this up two feet. You can see now the top brace or the top beam doesn't have to be perpendicular. It can be sloping, and we accommodate that as well. So I'm going to add in a vertical brace as well, just to show that it doesn't necessarily have to be a three point that has to be perpendicular. It can also be slightly slanted or sloped. So if I add in a couple construction lines here, See this vertical brace was added and it doesn't necessarily have to be perpendicular, but it also was sloping. Going off of that, we can do the shared connection. So if I edit this, I could change this in setup, but since for this case, I'm just going to show a case by case basis. So if I come into my connection specifications and I can combine my beam and vertical brace clip angles, now you can see that they have been combined. Instead of two separate ones. I'm going to go back to our other elevation view and we do brace to brace connections like I stated they're newer to STS2 but if I add in a brace here maybe I'll make that a W2 and if I come into my design criteria, we do have setup options for the job where you can do the wide flange vertical brace to gusset web connection. You can have it be web plates, channels, or none for default. And my wide flange vertical brace to gusset flange could be a flange claw angle, paddle plates, or none. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and leave it at default. Or you can edit this inside of the member edit screen. And I'll just go ahead and show quite a few examples just for this one material type in this one framing situation. So right now it's just set for my web connection type. It's going to be um, the web plates, but maybe now I want it to be flange paddle plates. You can see that updated right away. Maybe I don't want any connection. Or maybe I want this to be channels for my web connection type. I can also set my gusset to supporting. By default, it's welded, but I could also do a clip angle and maybe I want to change that to bolted clip angle as well. So there's quite a few options there. And that's just for this one framing situation of all of the modifications that I could do. And also, while I'm here, I can come into my expanded calculations. And as you can see, they're still updating on the fly. I'm just going to go ahead and set this back to automatic. And then since I'm here, I'll go ahead and copy and paste that. So I have it channel for my web connection. I'm 
And then the last thing we really have to talk about is seismic connection design. Again, in my design criteria, there is an option for seismic vertical brace gusset design. If I check that on, we have the SCBF and the OCBF. So your engineer can pick between the special concentrically braced frame, which will make up the gusset shape with a hinge zone, or they can pick the ordinary concentrically braced frame, which then will be the regular gusset shape. Sorry, I struggle with that word every time. So on this case, let's just leave it at the SCBF. How we used to do it was it would just do the OCBF basically and then you would manually stretch that gusset to create the hinge zone. But in this case we can now do the SCBF and I'm going to edit these braces. And I'm going to set them to yes. So you can see that the gussets moved up and this created a hinge zone which allows for the gusset to fold so that the brace can buckle. By designing the gusset from scratch using the hinge zone shape, we get smaller gussets in some cases. Now I'm just going to show the difference here. I'll change this to OCBF and just mark this one for processing. So you can see the difference. It created a smaller gusset without a hinge zone. And then we have the hinge zone over here for the SCBF. So that concludes today's webinar on designing vertical brace connections inside of SDS2. Today we covered how uniform force method can and will affect the output of your vertical brace connections, different vertical brace material types, calculations, designing a system connection around a lockable field, two and three point bracing, shared connections between the beam and vertical braces, and seismic design bracing. I'll now give you a few moments to type in your questions and I will answer them. Okay, so I have some questions rolling in here. So someone is asking, can you cut the wide flange vertical brace uh, for the gusset? So let me just open up six here. And I'm going to modify this and change it. My connection specs, actually, I'll turn off my seismic too. And then I'll turn these to automatic. So then we have the side of the gusset then. I can change for like my near side or my far side. So if I go ahead and change that for my far side and hit OK. So there I can cut that flange. So someone just asked, can you do that for WTs as well? So I do have a WT, maybe I'll just do this one. I'm going to turn off these seismic since I have them set up in my, my default now. And then my stem for my connection type, I can do a coped flange. And maybe I want that to be on my far side. 
and I can also change my stem direction. Let's see, yep. So you see all of these are updating on the fly. And we also have, somebody also asked about the stem orientation. So I can change my stem orientation too. As you can see, all of these are updating right away. Okay, this is a good question. So someone asked about um, if you were to have it set to the uniform case method of three, but it's framing into the flange. So if it's framing into the flange of a column, then it's going to use no special case. In that instance, uh, this frames to the web, but if I were up here and I set it to special case three and it's still, it's not gonna change anything since it's framing into the flange of the column. So in that case, it's going to use no special case. Look over a few more. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about special case one? So special case one was just moving that work point. So that's to help with the layout. Let me turn this down just a little bit. So that would help with the layout of the gusset to make that a little easier. So all I was doing was we do allow you to use um, the work point to go to the flange or the face of the column and the face of the beam. So you can move the work point right at this point instead of half nominal depth of the beam and the column. Let's see. Okay. Um, I mentioned rod bracing. Can you change the rod length? Yeah. So let me go over. I do have a rod brace over here. So somebody was asking, can I change the rod length? Let me move this over. And if I go brace connection, let me turn this off again. So let me go to brace connection to gusset. And there's an option for my rod length. Maybe I want that to be five feet. You'll see that it adjusted five feet for this one. There's another rod brace behind that. So do I want to change it for both? Sure. And so it adjusted that rod length in there. Okay, can you say how many erection bolts are used for HSS vertical bracing? Yeah, so if I go to, I actually have some HSSs here. By default, it's set to one for me. That's in my fabricator options and my um, member detailing fabrication options. And if I go to vertical bracing, then my by default, my HSS erection bolts is set to one. It can be none, one, or two. Or you can change that for a case-by-case -case basis. If I edit this, and I go into my connection specifications, I can set my erection bolts to be none, one, or two. If I set that to two, you see two in there. Can you go more in depth on the types of braces or types of connections for HSS? Yep, when it's framing to a base plate. So I'll just quickly go through these since I have it open. I'll go to my connection specifications. So we see welded right here. I can do bolted. I can do paddle plate. I have paddle plate double shear. And then I have double paddled plate. Let 
What if I want a, can you put a reinforcement plate in the web of a beam? Okay, so there is an option if I edit this. And connection specifications again, I actually had this option off because I didn't want it, but for my web shear, if I say if required, click OK. Then it can put a web plate in there or a reinforcement. OK. Stitch plate thickness. Let me go back. I'm going to change these back actually to, uh, I can edit this for my angle. So we have stitch plates, the number of stitch plates. This is also reading from my setup options. Um, we have our maximum stitch plate. Someone's asking about this stitch plate options. So we have number of stitch plates, the maximum stitch plate spacing, and the stitch plate gap. So in this case, let me turn these back to from break apart. Let me. help to actually have the vertical braces selected. Turn these to no, and I'll turn the break apart off. So it's still gonna recombine them, but it does keep the color since it's been broken off. So we have our stitch plates. And that's also in my fabricator options. And then I believe it is in member detailing fabrication. There should be stitch plate, I thought. Oh, duh. I might need to come back to that one. I thought there was a setting in there for stitch plates, but I guess I could be wrong for that one. I will get back to that person. Okay. Is there a left side for stitch plates? Nope, the stitch plates are just for the entire vertical brace. I'm gonna go back up to a few more of these. And if you have specific questions for framing situations, I would definitely make sure to contact your support rep too. They'll be able to do like a go-to meeting with you. Um, okay, let me look. Someone's asking where can we see these vertical brace videos? Um, I did mention that they are on the SDS tube YouTube channel. There are more configurations and connections for like, I think right now we have wide flange and we have angle, I believe, and um, trying to think of HSS, and then we're working on more currently as well to get those up there. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to try this. Someone's asking, can the truss of the, can the top truss be rotated 90? I don't believe so, but I will just check this. especially since I have things pinned. Uh, I won't worry about that. Okay. I think that is a no. Yep, that's a no. <laughs> but I also didn't... Yeah. My work points aren't probably the same either, so I could test that out a little bit more, but I still think that that's not possible. But I can test it a little bit more. Someone's asking about the claw angles. Let me see if I still have it. Yep, okay. So we do have, in here we have the different, this a little bit bigger. So this is the brace connection to gusset wide flange. Let me turn on my images. So someone's asking, can you adjust the holes in the claw angles? So here's an example of the lockable fields and it looks like you can try to adjust. So it looks like H would be for the claw angles. I can try it. Let's do 425. There you go. So I was able to adjust that. Um, let's see. Okay, somebody is coming back to it. It is possible if the white flange is rotated. Thank you very much for answering that. So that came back to the truss example. Okay. Can you have different hole types in the claw angles? Looks like I'm about to find out with you. Let's see, it does look like the angle to the brace connection you can change the whole type. Oh yeah, so it looks like you can change the whole type in both of these. Okay, so I think that's a good ending point for today's webinar. Um, thanks again for everyone for joining us and we hope to see you guys at SDS2 Summit next week. Thank you.